Capcom, where today we are playing Absolute Drift, the Zen Edition. Um, this is on PS4 or Xbox One. As the Zen Edition implies, I think this is a game that was also originally on PC and I believe iOS. Um, which begs a question, considering how fairly in-depth it is handling-wise. It's, um, it's a wonder how that <laughs> handled on iOS. Um, the big deal, I suppose, or the big gimmick here, the main gimmick, as, as the name implies, is that this is a drifty racing game. So it looks very top-down, Micro machines -y, um, but it's very sort of slippery, whoa, 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 uh, controls, and the handling takes a lot to get used to, and that's kind of where the zen aspect of it comes from. The emphasis is never on driving fast, or very rarely on driving fast. Uh, through the, the game stages here. It's just on controlling the car really well. Um, and it's difficult to, but occasionally I'm just starting to get used to just controlling the car and the throttle and barely um, handling the steering. And uh, the other gimmick about this is that it's a very sort of Tony Hawk's or skate or even skate or die. Uh, kind of inspired game in that uh, the main stages it's, uh, themselves, as you see in these these buildings here, have a certain number of goals to complete, like Tony Hawk's. Um, but then you're also in between um, driving around these, I guess, kind of open worlds, uh, each with a bunch of missions. So those are written on the, the screen kind of handily there, so I can drift under the pipe, under this particular pipe. And not, I didn't quite get it that time. Come on, drift under the pipe. Nope. I drift under this pipe if it kills me, damn it. There we go. Um, and there's a certain number of m missions within each world, and uh, once you. Oh, donut around the tank, nearly zoom a bit or a crash into the tank. <laughs> the other thing. Um, there's, yeah, there's, you see, 18 missions within each quote unquote world, and these worlds also act as a hub uh, for the different uh, tracks that are in the game. Um, you can, thankfully, forego all of this stuff and just choose tracks from a menu, um, but this is the means by which you unlock new tracks. Um, so if you just want to improve your score and get a few extra goals uh, on the missions you've already unlocked, uh, then that's fine. You can just pick those from the menu. Uh, but the main way of, of getting new stuff, and not just new uh, levels, but also new cars and things, is by doing this stuff. I don't know why that didn't recognize, <laughs> just I drifted under that fork. Clearly drifted under the fork. This way. See, I drifted under that fork. How was that, how is that not a drift? That's one of the things uh, that um, gets to me a little bit about this game is that it's not entirely clear sometimes what it wants you to do. Um, it's not entirely clear in the game's eyes what constitutes a drift, for instance, and that's kind of important in a game that scores you and ranks you based on how good you are at drifting. We found two of those uh, five mystery X's here. Um, so sometimes it seems really lenient, uh, like doing a donut around this crane so it's you to think that I need to do a complete circle, but it's like, no, you can do it in, you can take two or three stabs at that, that's fine. Um, and sometimes it seems like it's rewarding you and giving you points all the time for very little, um, but then it'll be you're not doing, you're, you're doing exactly the same as you were, um, but your combo's not going up, or you know, it says that it wants you to drift under something, and you clearly kind of, I kind of feel like I'm drifting under that, um, but for whatever reason, I'm not doing what the game wants me to do. Does it mean I should be under it while I... I don't understand what it wants from that mission there. Um, nope. Come on. Clearly. 
was part of me out? Is that the deal then? Does it in fact want me to go straight under the truck? Is that, is that the deal? There you go. Okay, I don't know why that was any different than it was before. So it, it's kind of full of some of those moments like that, um, which is annoying. Because um, I think that actually spin in the corner. This corner. Okay. Um, the, the, the game itself, very rewarding. The handling takes a lot to get used to. Um, it's very interesting to have this sort of top-down top down, micro machines -y style approach, but also a very uh, drift-heavy approach. You don't often see that, that, kind of, um, that kind of thing, or those, those two things mixed together is kind of a, a rare sight. Um, so that's cool. I need to find one more of those crosses. I think there's a couple of other missions as well. Um, and I do kind of like this this overall structure um, with the proviso that at least, you know, you can choose things from a menu once you've unlocked them. And hopefully we'll get some new events in a second that I can show you because there's only two more missions to check off in here. And I'm just going to get both of them because I've got the last missing X there. And doing that's a very simple. 17 of 18, and there we go. So um, once you've completed a world, then a bridge opens up into the next one. Um, you can see there with like the the Tory gates and things like that. There's a kind of Japanophile nature to this game. Kind of. Um, like there's a cutscene in the beginning that says, ah, drifting was invented by a Japanese street racer who had too much sake and couldn't drive straight. Um, and then, we can do this jump just for the hell of it. Nope. Right, 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 Um... Yes, and then you have like these uh, Tori gates in between each world, and all of the missions it says are in different. Um, all of the missions are it. It claims to be based in different locations in Japan, different actual places. It's like, oh, you're in Nagano. Ah, you're in Kyoto. Um, but that said, they're, they're all pretty much the same sort of industrial looking place, which is a, a kind of a shame. You know, it's, it's, you think, oh, this one, I'm in Yokohama, which is uh, where I live and we're recording this. And you think, oh, you know, might be near the, uh, the bright lights of Sakugicho or near the bay. And it's, no, it's just sort of bland industrial looking thing. So it's like, oh, uh, this mission's in Kyoto, so there's all sorts of like famous landmarks I could be driving past, right? Like, no, um, you know, you're just driving around an airport. Um, so there's a little bit of, you know, I guess, yeah, Japanophileism, but in in name only or in lip service only uh, which is a bit of a shame so I think they could really go far with this sort of minimalist uh, aesthetic combined with you know actual interesting stuff uh, you know or more interesting stuff um, okay so that's enough roaming around missions let's uh, go into this drift track here I'll show you what I mean in Osaka so I'm going to drive in here and uh, yeah, much like a Tony Hawk star game, it gives you five. Sorry, man, it gives you five different goals to do, um, and some things like uh, Jim Connor put you in an open environment and say you to do this within a couple of minutes. Um, this drift track kind of thing uh, will give you three laps to do all this, and. Um, there's no time limit, so that's where the zen aspect of the game comes in. Um, I can go as slowly as, or as quick as I want. The only um, thing is, I can't turn around and I can't go backwards. It will just get uh, time me out then, and I'll be like, okay, game over. Um, so I can go as slowly as I want, but I have to keep moving forward, and therefore, uh, you know, the, 
the three, um, you know, do it in three laps, that is actually a, a fairly stringent requirement. Um, so once you're actually on the track, there's all sorts of different things, like here, I have to, oh crap. So I've already gotten the score record there, so that was pretty easy. Um, but those lines, you have to complete a drift all the way around those lines. Um, or if you drift close to these poles, you get a certain number of points depending on the ang your angle of approach or, you know, how fast you're going through. Um, and that's pretty cool. This is actually, this seems to be a pretty easy set of levels given that I've already got like three of the five goals already. Um, but I'm not doing it particularly gracefully. So it is, um, yeah, as I said, like a good deal of satisfaction. It, it takes a lot of getting used to at first, especially if you don't play. You know, whenever I play racing games, I rarely play with a sort of drifting style. When I do drift in racing games, it's, it's normally in kind of um, outrunny style games that, that aren't quite... Uh, you know, that are focused on keeping you on forward momentum and they're not necessarily on uh, strict about spinning you all the way around and leaving you stranded so it takes a bit of getting used to conserve, to conserve your momentum as you drift um, but that means it's all the more satisfying when you do get things right oh, I'm not here. screw the pooch on that one Yo! Um, there's a motor power which, as you see, I squandered there. Um, again, and that's kind of just it's. You know, you have to score a certain number of points in the row and your, your multiplier will go up. Um, it's not necessarily, oh, do different things, it's more just keep scoring for the most part, although as I said, sometimes it's a little bit unclear of what the game wants um, you to do when it comes to scoring you. Um, so once it's done, and then it takes those those three points off, it gives you a ranking in terms of uh, where you are overall. Uh, 736 puts me in the lower 35% of the uh, leaderboard, so not too many people have uh, gotten as far in the game if they bought it, so that's, that's kind of a shame because the uh, game's pretty good. Uh, 2.6 seconds in a 6 multiplier. Let's retry that and do that one more time. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is kind of the game. There's there's more tracks to do this kind of thing in. Um, as I said, there's Jim Connor, or the game calls it, calls it Drift Connor, because I suppose Jim Connor's a trademark or a license thing. I can't call it that. Uh, but where it'll set you certain tasks. Basically, it's it's like the open world sections, but it's against it's in a smaller arena uh, and on a time limit. And there's also mountain runs, which are basically this, but they're they're point to point instead of um, instead of uh, circuit based. So not. You know, there's not a whole lot of value here, which kind of, or not value, but variety, I guess. Um, come on! Ah! I was just wanting to get that one more multiplier and didn't, uh, for whatever reason, trigger me, I guess, because I was going too slow. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's not a whole whole lot of, of variety in its tasks um, which might sort of impact it to some but I think it um, it holds true to where it was is a kind of um, bit more of a casual sort of mobile style experience which is to say not necessarily something that you're gonna sit down and play for uh, play for hours on end, but play sort of a few minutes here, a few minutes there, um, and enjoy that for what it is. And it is enjoyable for what it is. It's it's pretty satisfying. Um, terrible run. This is a terrible run. Let's try. Ah, oh, so close on that that drift thing as well. 
And so close on the last five. Let's let's go one last time. And there is that kind of. To be fair, one more run kind of appeal to it. That is definitely a factor. But yeah, I mean, you see, sometimes I, I definitely at least initiated a drift. You know, I would expect my point total to be going up for that or my multiplier to stay alive at least um, and there are situations where it's like yeah sure and you're, you're like really because it, it feels like I'm going straight but you're you're still scoring me um, and then there are other times where you know it feels like I'm perpendicular to the bloody road and um, the game's still saying nope that's not a drift and so there's my three second drift apparently I can forget about that and concentrate on racking up a multiplier. There's times as well, see there you go, I clipped the wall and it, uh, it scratched my multiplier. There's times where you can just brush against the wall and anyway, it will you know, it will take your multiplier away from you. Um, and then there are times again where it feels you're going full bore into the thing and it's like it keeps on scoring you. So it, it seems just the, the rule set either isn't clear to it isn't clear to me as a player or it's it's not sort of held up very consistently in the game. But uh, the game itself is, is pretty cool, it's pretty fun, and it's pretty cheap as well. I believe this is about $10 um, on PS4, it's out at the moment. Um, it is Absolute Drift Zen Edition, and if you're into this sort of thing, then this is the sort of thing that you're into. Um, yeah, it's a good example of a drifting game and with a neat little aesthetic. Um, so maybe worth a look, Chris Chant for KojiPop.com. Thanks for watching, bye.